Yeah, we want to hear from them, not me. <laughs> so, so Angela, let's start with you. Tell us something more about your, your personal history and background and how that led to, to you becoming the, the, the CEO of the Cupertino Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. Uh, so my journey to be the CEO of the Cupertino Chamber of Commerce is um, very long, I guess. <laughs> but I, I'm an immigrant, like all of us sitting here. And we, um, I came here to go to college and never looked back. Call California the home, my home because my father, when we were young, decided he wanted to work in Africa. I'm, by birth, I'm an Indian. And so we used to change, he was an expatriate, so we used to change cities every two to four years. So there was no home as such until I came here. So California, the Bay Area, Silicon Valley is home to me because I've been here for over 25 years. Um, and I have three children. They're, and as they were in school, that's what inspired me to be participating in the local um, activities because as an immigrant I was not aware of how the school system works here and what to do so I became I got involved as a classroom mom became a PTA president school site council which led me to be actually also on the school board which I was served for the last 10 years and I have a healthcare background I used to manage physician practices for my first 15 20 15 16 years of my professional life and from there moved on to be more on civic duty and services. And for the last five years, I've served on the Cupertino uh, Chamber of Commerce and go from there for now. So uh, Pragati, so, so uh, in 2011, you were named uh, an, an Asian American hero. So tell us about your background and what led, led, you, led us up to you being named an Asian American hero. Okay. Um, I think most of us have similar stories, which all began with volunteering in our children's classroom. And that's how from classroom, I, I got involved in the education system in uh, the city that I live in. And um, so I got um, very actively involved with the Saratoga Education Foundation. Then I served on the school board. And in 2011, the reason I was nominated was because of my contribution to education for the youth. And uh, I was very surprised because there's so many people doing so many wonderful things. And, uh, but I, a friend of mine nominated me. So when I went there, I, I was very, it was very hot, a warm feeling because there are people from different walks of community who uh, volunteer and spend their time. So there are so many ways to define, you know, Asian American hero. So um, I'm grateful for that, and uh, I hope to keep up the engagement that I started, you know, 25 years ago. And of course, that's a spectacular honor to be. Oh a, yes, a hero. it is. Thank you. So Nancy, tell us about about something about your background. So you've got one daughter at Stanford and one daughter at UC Merced. So do you have a family history of of, of Stanford and UC graduates? There's no um, the option that you're gonna go to college. It's like a, it's a fact. You're going to college no matter what, um, and that that's how I think uh, education changed the cycle of uh, you know break, break the cycle of poverty. So I think, uh, inspire my daughters. They see me going through classes, and I and I'm like, this is the only way to get out of this cycle. Um, yes, and then that's how um, me inspire them to go to college and well and do you remember when we started calling you the, the latina tiger mom sorry tiger mom <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, my daughters t used to tell me you're like a uh, tiger mom and i didn't know what it means so um 
And then after, uh, after I learned what it means, I was like, that's a compliment for me. <laughs> yeah. I, in fact, I, I, I like it. And uh, one of the things I always share with people is um, the way I raised my daughters. It's th they were not TV at home. They were no video games. Um, they were really focused in education. And, and I feel like I had a success on that because, I mean, I, I say thank to that. Now you're in... Um, in a good pad. Well, and I'm sure when, when, when Pragati talked about being involved in the, in the kid's classroom, right, and she's got a big, a big smile on her face, yeah. right? Uh, and and Pragati, say, say some more about being involved in the, in the, in the classroom. So I, I'm sure that everybody out there who has kids and their kids go to school, whether it's public or private, um, all teachers appreciate help because every classroom has at least 20 to 30 students in the class. And it could be as simple as helping with art project or helping a child who is struggling with um, math to help them count, you know, the basic stuff also. So um, I think in, in the community that we live in, there's always uh, appreciation and need for parent volunteers. And it's not just by writing a check, by giving your time. And I think that's what is very important, and that is the impact that has, that has the most impact, I would say, in the classroom. Well, and, and you said something interesting. In the communities that, that we live in, uh, you know, you're, you're from Saratoga, right? It's like, that's, that's, it's expected. And Nancy lives in East Palo Alto. That's a good right? point, yeah. And, right, it's a little bit different, right? And your kids actually didn't go to school in East Palo Alto. Uh, uh, yeah, they, um, there's a program called Tinsley Program. So they, this program places students uh, from East Palo Alto in different uh, cities like um, Palo Alto and San Carlos. So that's how I um, in, um, enroll my daughters in these programs. But also, uh, your point is very important to be involved in the, in the classroom. So, so your kids were, were, so you're living in East Palo Alto. Your kids are going to school across the freeway in Palo Alto. Now, you still have an accent. Yes, <laughs> and I'm proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes I have to listen to you carefully. Um, so, but you were involved in the, in the kids' classrooms oh, in yes. Palo Alto with the Palo Alto parents. So I, I was really involved. And one of the stories I always share with, with parents is um, I know they were placed in an ESL program. And I knew that was not a good place for them to be because uh, that means that kids doesn't speak good English. Uh, and that put them behind. So what I did is it was um, make sure that they get out of that uh, ESL program. So I, I think uh, many parents in my community are not aware of uh, that if your kids is an uh, ESL program, it's, it's not, it's, they're not set up for success. So I make sure that they get out of that program. Yeah, so, yeah, so for, we're, we're a little bit fortunate in, in Saratoga or Cupertino schools, right, that, that, that that the, the kids see that progression. That's normal, right? It, for you, it, it was a little bit different. But, but at the same time, again, with, with Pragati talking about being involved in the classroom, right? Yeah. You, 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 I'm sure you relate to that very well. Oh, yes. Yeah, that, that's very important to be involved in, in the classroom. Mm -hmm. so, so tell us about other roles that you've had in the community, each of you. Um, uh, you know, we, we, we touched lightly in the introduction, Ben had talk, just talked about a few of the things you're doing, but but we know, and again, especially you two, I, I, I really researched you on Google, so I know there was a lot more, and I, like I told you before, I, we, we put very little into your introduction because we want you to talk about some of the other things that you, you've done in the community. Okay, I'll start. Uh, so, um, basically, I, as I said, uh, besides the education, um, I have always felt that even though I'm from India, this is my home, this is my community that has given me so much. So I want to give back. Okay. And how do you give back? By doing things for the community that helps the community. So besides being on the school board um, in Saratoga, I have also been part of uh, the Saratoga Planning Commission. And um, then I've been involved with a lot of uh, city commissions like Library Commission, and um, now I continue doing more work in the global area. So I work for a nonprofit called Team for Tech. And basically, we help um, in advancing the quality of education globally, especially with underserved learners. 
and uh, by finding technology solutions and pro bono consulting. So, so going from my community, I'm trying my best to make the impact on education in a more global world. So um, as I'd mentioned earlier, I also served on the Cupertino School Board for 10 years. Just ended my service in December when my youngest went to a college. It was like a good time to move on and have some other parents be involved. And as on, being on the school board was really very good, very fulfilling because it's the, it's the place where you meet lots of people and you can really make a change. You can really impact the lives of children and the motto was always to make a decision based on how it would affect the children and not the adults that are in the room because you know, we are there to serve the children and not the adults. And that there were times that it was challenging, but I think throughout the years, it, I grew with it and learned a lot. And it also inspired my children to be more involved. Both my sons were really active in high school and over in the leadership programs. And in fact, my youngest one kind of outdid the other two, he decided he was going to serve as the school, uh, as the class president, and he did it for four years, from his freshman year to his senior year, and we were like, you're really, really wanting to give back. And it continues with my oldest son, too, because he is also very active, uh, because we believe that if we want to make a difference, we have to be part of the society we live in. We just cannot go to work, come home, play, and be done. You need to be involved. You need to be in the community. You need to volunteer. You need to uh, be out there, make sure you vote. Vote is very, very needed. And my kids have always voted from the day they turned 18. That was not a question to be asked. And I encourage everybody, if you know anyone who isn't registered to vote and is eligible to do so, please encourage them to do so. Um, so I, I'm involved in the community because, as they mentioned, I, I want to give back. I want to make it better, a better place where I live. I'm in um, the board of uh, Ravenswood Clinic, and also I'm in uh, Rosalie Renzo Center. And um, yeah, I, I feel like for me, I, I want to uh, have an impact in my community. As I said, I, I want to make it better and um, just give back. So very much like Angelia is saying, being, being really involved in the community. Uh, who have been mentors and role models to you during your during your time in the community? You know, um, Vandana is sitting here and she knows who I'll be talking about. So I have been fortunate to have uh, members of my own family who have been um, the trailblazers. And one of them is my brother-in-law, uh, Arvind Kumar, and who started India Currents, actually. So when I came new to this country, I remember I used to help him uh, work on India Currents, as well as he and my brother-in-law uh, started the first South Asian gay and lesbian organization called Tricone. So, um, from I, I cannot. This is not a joke. I landed on. I still remember on a Friday in the U.S. And on the next day, they took me to listen to Jesse Jackson at Stanford. And I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh. So this was 1988 I'm talking about, it's long, long time ago. So I come from that kind of family where it's like, elections are happening, get involved. So, so, so jet, jet lag not allowed. Jet lag not allowed, exactly. <laughs> I think I was inspired by a number of people, but most of the inspiration actually came from school, but from the elementary and middle schools my kids children went in, because there were principals and teachers over there that kind of showed you the ropes and you know told you how the system works here, because not going to school in America, it's very different from where I came, because I grew up in Africa and it was a British system, which is very different than how the American system of schooling is. And to be able, and I don't ever remember my mother volunteering at the school because that wasn't something that was done there. But over here, that is something that, as Pragati mentioned, is really expected. And to make a difference, you have to do it. And I encourage all of you to do it if you have young children, because something that has been 
tarnished with our, you know, just looking at Asians, people would say, oh, Asians don't volunteer. Don't even ask them to come volunteer in the classroom. And I got that when I first started, when my kids started going to school, and it doesn't feel good. So I guess it was just one of those challenges that made me go all the way to be the school board member, just to show them, no, we know how to volunteer, we know how to contribute. We are also as American as you all are, and we are here to stay and here to be part of the community. That's what makes us special, is that we are here to be part of the greater community, not just to be an Asian, but to be an American. Well, talking about giving back to the community, one of my mentors, uh, Sister T, is here in the, uh, she's in the audience. Um, after she said, you're ready to work in a school as a translator, I say, I don't think I'm ready. And she goes, no, Nancy, you're ready. And actually, uh, I was really, she said, she, she, she told the story. I was angry at her. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard uh, this story recently. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah I'm sure you were. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I feel like she, she believes she believe in me, and she saw the potential. And um, I, I'm very grateful for, for her for pushing me out the door. And uh, uh, through all these years, she's been, you know, my, my biggest um, mentor. And I also have um, Bill, Bill Somerville. So he's, he's a great part of... Um, so Bill Somerville is, is the founder of Philanthropic Ventures Foundation. So he, he believes in me, in me too, like Sister T. So I'm very grateful for, for that, that they, they saw this potential in me. Yes, I know. That, that's, how we, <laughs> that's how we met, was through Mr. Somerville. What tactics and strategies have been most effective through your career? What, what's worked? And, 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 and sometimes it's interesting to look at things that don't work. So if you've got a funny story about something that didn't work, well, we'd be delighted to hear that too. <laughs> you always make things happen. <laughs> oh, you're telling me everything works perfectly every time? I, I tell people in PowerPoint and Excel, all of my plans work perfectly every time. Exactly. <laughs> so I, I think um, I, I have this motto, and I do this with my children all the time, is if they're complaining about something, don't just complain to me. Come up with a solution. Because otherwise, you can just, you'll be such an unhappy person, actually. So I, I'll just give you an example around school or the community, and people will be like, oh, this doesn't work, or, you know, we don't have this program or that program. And I'm like, okay. If you let's find out if other people want this particular program. So I'm very action oriented. So if I find out there's a problem, I have to find the solution. Now, how do I get from A to B? So it'll be like, do we need to fundraise? Do we need more volunteers to make this pro program happen? And so, and, and if I don't find people who want to, who want to just talk and not walk the walk, I'm like, goodbye. I'm not doing this then. So I, I am really, really, I'm very focused on, even when I'm volunteering, I'm very focused on having a problem. If you have a problem, you have to find the solution. And I really, really think if there's a problem, you ha can find the solution. Well, there's always challenges in life and challenges in work and volunteering and around what all we do and especially if you are a community leader and you volunteer you get a lot on your plate people come to you and expect you to be able to solve the problem or be part of the solution or maybe help them find a solution it's not that we can always find a solution but i think if we are open and we are available we can help people find those solutions and i truly believe in empowering our young our youth because as we get the youth to be more powerful and the youth to be participating, I think we can do a lot more in our society and in the world at large. And for that reason, I keep you know, pushing my own children to be more involved and, um, and also to pushing other um, high schoolers. You know, like as the CEO of this Cupertino Chamber, we started a program where we have high schoolers come and volunteer and be interns in the office because that gives them an exposure to business and how a business is run or what are the challenges that a business owner faces. And it has been a great, tremendous success that we have a lot more kids wanting to come do that than we can work on. So I guess that's a challenge that I'm still trying to figure out how we can help more youth be involved in the community? So, well, for me, I see it that way. Uh, obstacles are part of your success or challenges. And, and I feel if you don't have a challenge, uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't give you a lot of satisfaction when you have a goal. 
there you should expect challenges, challenges and ob obstacles all the time. Uh, I think for me, uh, th those the challenges and, uh, challenges and obstacles work on my favor, fa favor because uh, make me more determined, more stubborn. I was like, I'm gonna get it. I, I'm gonna get there, and and I think it, it helped me. So let's talk about your, your some of your current activities and how people can be involved in your current activities. So, so Nan, yeah, maybe we'll start, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll change up the, top, the, the direction a little bit. <laughs> well, so, I, I have many uh, um, well, opportunities. Your current, we'll talk about your current, your current job job. Okay, well, I, I work for East Palo Alto Academy Foundation. Uh, the foundation um, raised uh, uh, funds for, uh, stu to prepare students for college and also uh, helping through college transition and helping uh, in college to um, so yeah, we, we um, help the students uh, in low income communities. And uh, now we, I feel like we, we, we this is a, a good time to advertise. <laughs> we well, are in, let's back up. So, so East Palo Alto Academy is a, is a public charter high school in East Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. Enrollment's what, 360? 360. And we almost have a 100% graduation of a high school. Uh, this year we have 90, 94%. And uh, most of the students, is, they are the first uh, generation of, um, that graduated from high school. Yeah, so, the, so most of the students, yeah, for, you're, not, you're not talking college, you're talking first generation to graduate from, from high, high school. school. Yes. And you had, you had a 94% graduation rate this, this last year. year. Mm -hmm. And the previous year you had? A uh, uh, hundred. And these are kids predominantly from East Palo Alto. Yes. And um, they, they are the, the first kids that are going to the, 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 the school. The former school board members to your, to your left are, are like. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you can see their faces, right? They're both like, wow. <laughs> yeah, we definitely uh, make sure that students are ready for college. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. And, and so, so you work with the foundation that supports the high school. Yes, uh, and my job is to basically encourage parents to support the students in college because they don't have a college experience, so they don't know how to support their, their students. So that's part of my job. Yeah, so, so uh, yeah, first, first in their family to, to graduate high school, so the parents may be well-intended, but they don't really have the experience yes. or know-how to help support their kids in college. So that's how we uh, have this program. And, and I remember the, the principal one time but you're, you, it, we're not quite sure what your enrollment is into, high, into college after of the graduates, but I remember your principal saying, we, we, we get out the band and we put the kids in the, in the band and we drive them to Kenyatta College that's, those, that's make, a, to, help them, to help them enroll. Yeah, that's... The, the, again, the school board, the former school board members are, <laughs> to your left are really like... <laughs> that's impressive. Yeah, so. yeah, different, yeah, different environment than... Yeah, and Angelie, so some more things, things that you're currently you're, working on, <laughs> yeah, maybe. currently working on. How, uh, well, how can we uh, be involved? How can we help you? Yeah, so um, I am also, curr I'm curr well, once my school board uh, term ended and um, I had an unsuccessful run for the Saratoga City Council, but that doesn't mean I want to be back, but who knows. But I am also serving on the Saratoga Planning Commission currently, besides being the CEO for the Cupertino Chamber of Commerce. So that the Chamber of Commerce has given me a sight into nonprofit world. And I think that's a great thing, place that a lot of us can do more for the community if we don't have a direct access to be helping our community. So what I would encourage everyone to do is, if you have kids in schools, go and volunteer in their classroom. I know only the K to five would let you do that, the middle schoolers don't, but at the same time in middle school and high school, they also still need parent volunteers. And furthermore, if no kids in school, that's fine. There's so many things in your neighborhoods that would need your help. That, you know, do block parties, have neighborhood watch groups, start a, um, you know, meet up just to talk about current politics if you're not part of it. Encourage people to meet each other. I think the more we know each other, the better we understand our differences and the more we find the similarities that we have. So I would say, look me up. 
Google, you will find me. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> and I am here to help anyone I can in any regard. I always get uh, high school kids from um, the neighboring high schools come to the chamber and ask for writing a bill. How do you support, how do you write a bill? Or how do we start a business? Or how do we do something? Or if they need a speaker. So I am very, very accessible and would love to help everybody. So I say, can. Say, more, say more about the connection between the Chamber of Commerce and the nonprofit space? So a Chamber of Commerce is actually also a nonprofit. And, but it's a different set of nonprofit where we are there to advocate for local businesses and community. And the key difference in the Cupertino Chamber of Commerce is that we go beyond just being for businesses. We really believe that a business thrives if the community thrives. So we work really hard with, we have a lot of our nonprofits who are also members of the chamber, but in turn, we also make sure that we support the local nonprofits that are in our space at, in Cupertino and surrounding cities so that we can be their advocates for the local businesses. And the businesses have come around to understand that as long as, you know, you don't have to go out and just sell your product. You have to go out and volunteer and in turn your product will sell. And that's the message we try to relate to people and businesses we work with. So it really sounds like, like uh, encouraging the businesses to really be a part of the community. Yes. Definitely. And, and if we Google you, I can't remember, is your e e our email address readily available? Yes, you can find me very easily. <laughs> very easily on LinkedIn or the email address is there. I have, my website is AnjaliKauser.com. I did not take it off after my run from Saratoga City Council, so it's still up and running. So, um, as I said, um, I, I'm still passionate about education. So I'm involved with a nonprofit organization called Team for Tech, which is based in San Mateo. And I continue working with them. And um, as I was saying earlier, that basically we help advance the quality of education. So we work with nonprofit organizations which are focused on education around the world. And we help them with their technology needs. And we have partnership with companies here. So since we are in Silicon Valley, I'm reaching out to all the high-tech companies there. We have a technology grant fund. So if anybody out there would like to uh, either donate um, money or, um, you know, computers, laptops, which could be old, it doesn't matter, because uh, we send them to these education nonprofits over the world. And they, some of them have never seen a tablet in their life, so it's really heartwarming to for these teachers to see this tablet and use it in the classroom to teach students. So the impact is really, really high because our volunteers go and uh, train the teachers and the teachers are going and teaching another 250 students so on. So we have actually uh, reached, I think as of this year, about 60,000 um, learners uh, globally and our goal is to reach 100,000 learners by 2020. So there's plenty of you're, you're, plenty you're, work to do. Plenty of work to do, and you're exactly. happy for. And again, it, can people con contact yes, you? Yes, yes, uh, they can contact me, and the website is uh, T E A M, the number four tech T E C H dot org. So if you go to teamfortech.org, and you can find me there, and you can email me, and I'll be happy to get you involved in so many ways. I have lots of ideas, so you have to just tell me your time commitment. Now, now maybe you're, you're making people concerned about showing up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, or you can write me a check. I can take either. <laughs> I, I'm fine with that too. Thank you. Um, uh, let's, let's, in a moment, let's open the, uh, the, the floor to, to some questions. I think we've got a little time for some questions. Um, but, and, and before the dance performance, are, are you, are you able to stay for a, for a little bit afterward if people want a chance to talk to you this evening? Sure, sure, yeah. absolutely. Yes, I'll stay a little so, so let's open it up. Do we have questions from the audience? Questions? Oh, maybe we should. Thank you. Uh, this question to Angelique. Uh, Palo Alto or Cupertino Chamber of Commerce, is that an appointed 
position or do you have to run for that? It's actually, I was, um, it's a job. I was hired there to work. It's oh. not an appointed or, or a running, I guess I can say it's appointed because I was hired by the chamber board. Okay, I'm a member of a Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai, U.S. China Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai. Okay. Uh, all three of you, when you decided to go out to, to take your rights, uh, be involved in the, in the community, at what stage of your life did you decide that you want to do that? I For me, it's 45 out of 52 years living in America. So I started going out and volunteering actually when I first came to college in the States, which was 30 years ago. And on the college campus, I participated in the student government and also in the Indian, uh, Indian, Associ Indian Student Association in the leadership roles in both the place, and that's when I first started. So I guess 30 years ago. I've been here 30 years, so I started like maybe 25, 26 years ago? I don't know. <laughs> so I've lived, I've lived in this country for 30 years, and um, that is an interesting question, by the way, because it made me think, when did I start? Um, so I, it was about 20 years ago, so once I had my kids, and uh, then I felt, okay, I need to do something since I was not working outside the home. And um, so about 10 years into living in this country, I decided to uh, contribute back to the community. Well, I didn't know that I have uh, leadership skills uh, when um, I remember a friend asked me to uh, be part of this board. Uh, and that, that was a very, um, a very uh, interesting experience because I learned that, yes, I can, I can have an impact in my community by representing um, my pop, the population in my community. So that's how I realized that I, I love to be involved in my, my community and I want to give back. So it brings me more passion for, to be um, involved in the community. So, so you're talking about when they asked you to be a part of the Ravenswood yes. Family Health Clinic Board? Yes. They sent you to board school, right? Oh yes, the, they send you. They give you training, and um, yeah. So I, I was so thrilled to be there. Yeah, I'm, I'm still part of, you know. So you concluded that in order for us to participate in the community of political involvement, so we should start when we're young. Yes, I'm, you. I'm you, happy to see one, at least one. Follow your young. passion. Follow your passion. <laughs> I think well, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and we're all young at heart, so right, if we're not volunteering now, right, it's, there's, there's always a good time to start. Never too late. Never, never too late. Uh, I have a question for Nancy. So I'm very impressed that the school you're um, founded in East Palo Alto has a 95 to 100% graduation rate. You must have hit a lot of obstacles. How did you keep the students at school? And how did you uh, make them graduate? Uh, can you share some of your experience? Good, good question. So we have a lot of resources. Uh, our principal is amazing. Uh, she, um, she knows what the students need. So she brings whatever we need, like uh, professional training. We, she had the best teachers. She has the best uh, resources in the school. So, so that's how the foundation founds all these programs in the school and make sure that the students um, have everything they need because most of the students are homeless uh, and they come ho ho to school um, with all these, um, I don't know, difficulties. But we make sure that they feel at home. In, and I feel like the school, and a lot of people talk about how the school is like a family. Uh, and it's a very uh, family-oriented environment. So I guess, I think that that's the success of the, the students. Well, and, and we know that, that, that you do tours and you're starting to do lunch with the principal. Yes, um, so. let me know if you would like to visit the school, uh, meet, uh, meet with the principal and have lunch. Um, let me know, I'll give you um, my um, cards. Yeah, so, so, uh, so I've been multiple times. One time Nancy last year told me, you've been to everyone, <laughs> every tour. <laughs> um, it's, it, 
it's worth seeing. You've got to see it. I think, I think, I think these two are ready to go, to yes, go see I it. Yes, I would like to take you. <laughs> yes, yes, I think Anjali and I would love to come yes. and see that. I would be very interested to see the school also. And I'm sure you'd be very interested to sit down with, the, with their principal. The principal is delightful. You, I'm sure you'd enjoy that very much. Okay, so we have it on record that Nancy is going to take us to the school, yes, right? Happily, happily, happily. happily. Yes. What's one piece of inf like advice or information you would want to give a young person pursuing civic leadership or like a position in civic leadership? So I, I think um, my one piece of advice would be the moment you turn 18, you must register to vote if you haven't done that. Um, it's, don't depend on your parents. I think uh, by, by the time you're 18, you know how to drive, you know how to go places, so you should take it upon yourself to register to vote and definitely go and vote and make sure that your family members who are registered voters sh show up to the booths and vote. It's really, really important. The difference, um, I think we were talking to Jeff earlier, is I came to this country um, as it, all, all of us actually realized we came as immigrants and we could have easily happily stayed as green card holders the reason we became citizen is because I wanted that right to vote. And if I'm not, um, you know, if I'm not fulfilling that right, then why did I become one? And I feel people who live in this country have become very, very blasé about this special right that we have. Think about all the people in this world who do not have the right to vote and not just this country, so we should take that right very seriously. My, my advice is, and when you wanna do something and you hear the word no, is when you pursue the most. It's, you just follow that, that voice inside of you that tells you, uh, and uh, that's my advice. When you say no, you do it, you go. <laughs> I guess the follow-up to that would be, step outside your comfort zone. And something that I would want to add to an earlier question was that what else can you do as you know, 2020 is the count, is census counting time, and I am serving on the county uh, committee for census, and I would encourage all of you to make sure that every single person gets counted. So please, the, it's going to happen in April, but right now we are already starting the push to make sure people realize getting counted doesn't mean you have to be a citizen. It does not mean anybody gets information whether you're a non-citizen or a citizen. It really impacts as to what comes to our community. If we are not, if we are not counted, it will be very, very challenging. So please encourage everybody to be counted, including the toddler in the house because we always forget to count the children but ca the children count just as much so we're starting to run short of time but let's ask I think there's one more let's take one more question and then and then they'll be here so they won't they won't leave so let's ask one more one more question thank you uh, this question for three of you uh, I as I mentioned, I, I have passion working with younger generation, and um, my job right now is the director of uh, education department. We actually uh, have a support uh, internship program across the country uh, for like a college students or high school students want to uh, be interns at like uh, elected office, like public service. Uh, so I definitely agree that uh, younger generation, they are very capable, and if we can have them help us, that will be great. So I want, if you can share any experience you, when you work with young people, how you can inspire them to get involved. Or, yeah. uh, so I think it's again by example. So if you can share your story and they see that you are a civically active, then you will encourage them to participate. Yeah, definitely. Um, be, be a mentor. Have, have mentors. Maybe you want to say, say the last word? Oh, yes. <laughs> um, I, I think it can be anything small also that students can get involved in, whether it's school or classroom, start from there. And who knows, you know, opportunities are always out there. But Put yourself out there that, hey, I'm here. I can do anything. I can help. And I think believing in them too, uh, uh, letting them know that you believe in them. 
So with that, again, they'll be here. So we didn't get to all the questions, but they'll be here. So, so hopefully you'll get to ask their questions. Absolutely. Yeah, we've, as, I, as I told them starting, I want to see something happen. And I'm delighted to see we've got at least two sitting next to you that have come to your campus uh -huh. because of this meeting. So we've got something happening. And with that, Vandana, we're going to bring you back up and let you do the introduction. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much for sharing your experience.